This is the Tyson first step in the three step process. Uh, this is the only time uh, where the public is able to speak on the issue. Uh, the next step would be on the Codes and Regulations Committee uh, next Monday. And uh, that is an open uh, public meeting. Uh, you're able to come and attend that meeting and sit right where right now. Uh, but it's a meeting at which the committee members of the city council will discuss uh, the, the item at that, at that time. And other uh, city council members will, will be able to participate as well. There will be no public participation on this issue. Uh, the final step then would be on March 4th in the uh, city council. Uh, and that would be the final vote, and that would be the determining vote, and that third step of this process. Uh, we're a bank, which we currently now have, 
uh, other retail uses, uh, dry cleaners, uh, a liquor store, some type of a grocery uh, store uh, available as uh, in, historically in that neighborhood. So those things were all kind of discussed uh, with, the, with the people that lived in that area. Also historically, uh, there was a, a liquor store probably about 200 feet uh, from where Saeed's store is. Uh, Buzzy Genestra had a liquor store there that was torn down at one time for uh, Main Street and improvements uh, years before the roundabout uh, came in. Uh, I think it's a good idea. Uh, I certainly would support that. Uh, I do support and would continue to support the store for the enhanced uh, business offerings that you would have. To grab that bottle of wine every once in a while. Uh, I think it's a positive for the for the neighborhood. Uh, I think that he has done a wonderful job of coming into the neighborhood, being a good business uh, and a good neighbor. Uh, he's uh, been very involved uh, in some of the activities in the area. So I think he's really learned from the neighborhood, and the neighborhood has certainly learned from him. Uh, and wants to support him and wants to see uh, uh, see this matter uh, to move forward in a positive way. Uh, I just had a letter uh, from a Miranda Buell who stated in her letter, as a former Church of Grove board member, a longtime resident of the neighborhood, and a business owner of the Cone Company in the North End, I personally can say Northwest Foods will have this neighborhood's full support. I can further state that Saeed has proven to be a responsible business owner Northwest Foods will not only add to the continuous improvement of our neighborhood, but also a team player in respecting and meeting community needs. Thank you. Now, let me ask a question. You understand that the uh, staff's recommendation is for approval of the tobacco denial of the package liquor sale, approval of the beer and wine sales. Are you for a full liquor license? No, I would for, for the uh, conditions that he has agreed upon. We certainly understand that. We support whatever he, he agrees. It's just right now, it's just for beer and wine. Right. The way this is right. That's what you, you agree to you agree those conditions. He's okay with beer and just beer and wine. Yeah, I, I think that. Uh, I mean, obviously, uh, I, I see the, the need for the liquor, but I think he understands that uh, he, he needs to kind of walk and, and, and do this and, and uh, grow through this and then continue to enhance his business. My name is Lenny French. I'm the owner of Horseflower's Creative Glass Spot, which we are a gallery and a vintage boutique across the street. Um, I'm here. I'm like you've had her basically to speak about supporting and everything for the liquor license. I find him to be a very upstanding citizen in the neighborhood. He's helped out quite a bit. Uh, got to know him ever since we started the gallery up. And I go over there occasionally to pick up food and stuff or things for our own meetings and various events. And by having him you know, have the liquor license that he needs, I feel like he'll also be able to support him now upcoming businesses or whatever needs the supplies to run their business in the area to without having to run way to the east side of town or way to another whole area it would actually help our community a lot. So. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mike Warpal. I am the artistic director of the West Side Showroom Theater. A uh, new theater that's opening at 1414 North Main Street. Uh, right across the way from where Saeed is going to be. And we have discussed, the board of directors of our nonprofit has discussed this issue, and we're here, I'm here to support Saeed and uh, uh, speak on behalf of the board of directors. And we all agree that, and we unanimously agree that we support Saeed. Um, he's a friend, he's our neighbor, and uh, we trust them to run this business out of the Thank you. My name is Rick Wesley. I've been in the Churchill's Grove for about two and a half years. Um, my wife Lisa and I, um, we're here to uh, support Sunny and his endeavor here to um, expand his product offering and be able to make a role of his store there. Um, when the west side of Rockford was virtually a food desert, um, I used to work with underprivileged kids on that side of the family. 
uh, site had a store over there at that time for a number of years, and uh, I'm familiar with that operation. Um, he was successful there by many standards. Um, he offered basic food stuffs, including fresh produce, and he just got outside. Um, all the everyday household consumables we use all the time. Um, all liquor and tobacco products. Um, nearby neighbors with limited transportation options had convenient access to the goods from his store. And um, Saeed had been involved with all of them, all of them, Linda McNeely and Rockford Police Department in deterring crime. Um, he was able to earn a fair return on his investment and uh, an honest living. And then, um, due to uh, an uncooperative and uncaring landlord, he was forced to move from that business. So, after a broad search for a new location here in the city and in other nearby villages, he chose to purchase property with the help of Northwest Bank. This is a shop on the Northwest Edge of Churchill's Grove in Rampart, of course. And um, one of the reasons he chose this location was the pleasing neighborhoods and the people that reside in that neighborhoods. And um, he wanted to serve this particular area. He chose us. And um, anyway, he's been in business now for almost three years, and he's given us very good service. He supported neighborhood improvement projects. I personally witnessed him going out of his way to give special help to people who need there at the store. Um, he's a fair, honest man, has been proven, has been proven to be a very good neighbor. He's a very good friend to many of us. Um, Saeed's business has not flourished at this new location. Uh, in fact, if you can't draw more customers into the store, he soon will be forced to move out or uh, maybe he close up shop entirely. Selling the cigarettes, cigars, beer, and wine are not all that profitable, but it would significantly increase traffic at the store and an increase cash flow. Um, something different. I'm not familiar with the, the petition exactly, Saeed, uh, but I, I know also that selling car liquor does increase traffic flow, and there's a much more profit margin than type of product, too, uh, that you could use to improve his other offerings, such as the fresh meats and fruits and vegetables. On two previous occasions, um, he requested these licenses for the city. The first time he withdrew his application at this hearing, um, when a couple came forward from the neighborhood and said that they did not want him to be able to sell liquor alcohol. Um, he withdrew his petition at that time, forfeited the application fees. He wanted to become part of our community and didn't want to do anything that those in the community did not desire. He hoped that after people got to know him, they might become more comfortable with him selling liquor and tobacco. The second time he applied for the licenses, they were denied by city council upon recommendation from this board. In this case, Saeed appeared here by himself. Um, Saeed's a little bit of, uh, I'm gonna use the word timid. Um, he did not request that anybody be. Most of us in the neighborhood did not understand how the process was working, so he was here by himself. Um, somebody here at the board, I know, even asked him where his supporters were. And uh, for this reason, there's a meeting many of us here tonight. So, um, there, um, if I understand correctly, the main concern of those who were originally in opposition that liquor and tobacco sales and site establishment, that they were concerned that it may attract less than desirable people in crime to our neighborhood. Um, my wife, Lisa, and I have had to consider that very carefully. Um, preservation of our nice neighborhoods and public safety everywhere in our city are important to us. Uh, we've had to weigh these concerns against what we believe is a right and privilege for any upstanding citizen and a legitimate entrepreneur to establish and maintain a business that meets the needs of nearby residents. Uh, after the careful consideration of that, um, we feel that the latter outweighs the prior and ask you to make a favorable recommendation, please. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for letting us all come in here and have a chance to see in front of you. Um, I appreciate the board's time and consideration. My name is Angela Fellers, and I am here to serve my friend, uh, Zay, who owns a store uh, in my neighborhood, which provides uh, more than just uh, more than, than just a storefront or a, a running past it to, to grab something quick for my family, but also provides an anchor in our community and access to fresh food, uh, fresh vegetables, fresh meats, fresh produce uh, that otherwise we have to cross the river for uh, or drive more than two miles. For. So, so it's not just that the store is providing a, a community structure or, um, or or a place to grab something quick. It's actually providing a very real need, especially for those of us that want to just have the ability to run the store and grab a, a gallon of milk or, or a, a, a loaf of bread for our children. And I, I have gone to know him uh, over the 
last couple of years that he's been in our neighborhood. And I've watched him beautify the corner. I've watched him engage with our neighbors. I've watched him learn the names of our children. I think that if you asked him, he would tell you that I have Charlotte, who's nine, and Jeffrey, who's seven, and, and Henry, who's five, and Charlotte's bike is pink, and she likes to lean it against some of the potted flowers that he has in front of his store. It is very important to me that not only do we provide um, this kind of service to our neighborhood, but that we're very thoughtful uh, about the people who are running these businesses. We have, we have a responsibility to build vibrant communities, and we build vibrant communities by building, building vibrant neighborhoods. And I think that it's a testament that we have a partner in building a vibrant neighborhood in both Churchill's Grove and Ashwater, and all of the people who have taken their time to be here this evening to talk to us for. From, from a practical standpoint, vi you know, viability for a business doesn't just happen because we love him or because he plants flowers or because he knows that my daughter likes Kit Kats and she isn't really very partial to Snickers. Um, the, the viability comes from him also being able to run a profitable business, uh, from him being able to have a higher amount of foot traffic. Um, and also to provide a place for our neighbor, our friends and neighbors to run into each other and say hi. You know, after we drop our kids off the bus. Um, I know that there's been some concern uh, that it might bring undesirables out. And I take offense at anyone referring to any human being as undesirable. Um, but that aside, from a, from a logistical standpoint or from a, a perception standpoint, um, a lot of that has to do with accessibility. There's no bus stop in this corner. There's, there's no place to, to you know, congregate at this corner, unless you're counting the farmer's market that happens right across the street. It's also very popular that he supports. Um, this, there, there's liquor that is sold literally right next door at Dorothy's Color, which is an, an institution uh, in our neighborhood, uh, which is a sit-down restaurant and wouldn't be a competition. And we need to support viable businesses, viable businesses and their profitability and their health in our communities, especially to counter the, the fleeing that we've had from the There's a restaurant right across the street that, that I understand has been against this, this zoning mission. They're not even in business anymore. Let's support the businesses that are in our communities, that know our kids, that know our neighbors. Let's make sure that they're viable, that they're vibrant, and let's make sure that we're really supporting the people who are supporting us. So thank you for the board's time. Any questions? Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Zach Rotello. Um, <clears throat> five years plus uh, Churchill's Grove resident, just moved to Edgewater. Um, I'm also the general manager at the Lincoln Tavern. I'm also on the board for the Rockford North End Business Association. Uh, I'm just here to show my support for Saeed to apply for his uh, year of wine license. Uh, you can see he's proven to be a very good neighbor uh, to everyone in the North End. Um, I know he's spearheaded a project to <clears throat> replant all the planters box. Uh, along Lauren Street, and uh, getting a lot of that donated, did a lot of the work himself, and with a few other people. Uh, and a lot of people in the neighborhood appreciate that kind of thing. I think he's paid his dues, and I know the difficulty of running or <coughs> running a business uh, just on food margin, which can be very difficult. So, if uh, a few cases of beer and wine attract some new customers and keep this business viable, I'm all for it. Um, I appreciate having a diverse type of uh, business in our neighborhood. And that's the kind of uh, convenience store, uh, grocery store that really adds more to our neighborhood. Uh, happy to see more full storefronts than empty ones in our neighborhood. So again, I'm here to support. Them. So thank you. Hi, my name is Stacy Walton. Um, I apologize ahead of time for any redundancy in my comments because I didn't intend to speak. Uh, I only wanted to add a couple of things. People have already spoken about what a great addition to the neighborhood. Saeed is, I don't personally know him, many of you seem to. Uh, I have shopped at his store many times, but I tend to come after I've been running or walking my dog, so I'm not dressed this way. And um, there was one occasion when I went in after walking my dog, uh, so dressed very poorly, and I didn't have enough money for the things that I bought. He didn't know me. It was an early Sunday morning. I was like a dollar twenty-five short. I only grabbed cash and walked up there. And and he said, "Take what you need. I trust you to come back." And we at Walgreens or Target or Schnucks has ever said that to me. 
and I doubt that they ever will. But I've been shopping for those places for over 20 years. That speaks to character in a business owner and in a person. And I appreciated that more than I could say. The only other thing I wanted to touch on was, I live on the west side. I lived in Churchill Grove for 20 years. And in July, it broke my heart, but I moved, I moved to Edgewater. And I love Edgewater, too. I will always live on the west side in Rockford. To me, the west side is the best side of this city. And we need small businesses. The cornerstone of Rockford is the support of small businesses. And I'm not sure that we have done the best that we can with the small businesses we have, but I see that changing. Our downtown is, uh, is testimony to how this city is taking a new look at its own development and growth and what we can do to support that. The decisions that are made here tonight will help with that. I understand that you're already in favor of this. I think the reason we're all still speaking is the hope that whichever the next level is, it will go to that with your strongest possible recommendation. Um, I organize people for a living, and it is tough to get a group out on a Wednesday night during winter. So the group that is here tonight, that's, that's a testament to what this gentleman and this business mean to our community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Board. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, thank you for everyone that came tonight. Appreciate it. Uh, a lot of third ward residents here. So, uh, but I wanted to give a little bit of background uh, to get to the board here. What has transpired since the first time uh, Steve was here? Um, I think that's very important. It fits into the narrative of what's going on tonight. Uh, when Saeed first came in, I think there was a understanding uh, with the community and the immediate community that this was going to be more of a uh, meat produce going to grab a sandwich. And I think when uh, Saeed originally then started looking at liquor and tobacco, it took a lot of our residents by surprise, frankly. Uh, also the business, businesses up there as well. So with that element of surprise, there was some pushback. Um, the area now up there at the North End, since that time, as alderman of the ward, I've worked extremely, extremely hard on that area. Uh, I consider that an area that is going to be an anchor for four different wards. You have Alderman Beck's ward of Edgewater there, you have Alderman uh, Rose with the North End Square, you have Alderman Thompson Kelly with Signal Hill budding right up near there, and then obviously the third ward uh, with Churchill's Grove. It's a very important area, and we need to do our best at really enabling that area uh, to prosper for businesses. As government, all we do is create the, the uh, kind of the setting for the businesses. We don't run the businesses, obviously, but it's up to them then to thrive uh, with what setting we are placing as a city. So with that being said, North End, uh, we are, uh, I've gotten the three other aldermen to commit some of their work funds to put into that area up there because they see that even though it's in the third ward, they see the importance of that area being successful. So, we, uh, we've got the city to commit capital uh, instead of just re uh, not repaving, but uh, uh, so we're not looking for uh, just sealing, resealing the parking lot behind the North End businesses. It's actually across the street on the where site is located. Uh, we have gotten the city to commit funds for a whole new parking lot all new striping, all new landscaping, uh, because that back side is to be many times the front side to those businesses there. So it is extremely important that we create that setting for these businesses to succeed. Uh, Said, since that time, from the original 
time that he came in to apply uh, has been a very, uh, very good citizen for our area up there. Uh, he has committed time to beautifying on Auburn Street with some of our community members uh, that, that really put in their, their time uh, elbow grease and beautifying that area there. So thank you for the community members for that. So, but I as an alderman uh, in that area that has put in many, many hours uh, does feel comfortable with this uh, application. Uh, I do feel comfortable with the conditions that are put in place as a recommendation by the city. Um, so with those, rec with those conditions put in place, uh, I think Saeed uh, could, could prosper in that area. So if there's any questions for myself, received that uh, email that uh, I distributed earlier from some concerned business owners across the street. Um, and in consideration of that, and also uh, from some other statements I think that were made here, the implication being that uh, the one condition on here, number 14, says there shall be no single serving sales of beer or wine in volumes of 12 ounces or less. I would say that based on the statements I've heard from people and not wanting to have single sales of any sizes, that maybe it should be adjusted to say there shall be no single sales servings of beer, period. Because wine bottles obviously are single serving. Regardless of the size. Regardless of the size. I think that would kind of calm some of the issues that have been brought up by many people with litter. Okay. And, uh, you know. So I'll amend that okay. to amend number 14 to say. There should be no single serving sales of beer, period. Right? Is that what you mean? Yes. Serving sales of beer at any volume or wine in volumes of 12 ounces or less. Yep. Yes. Yep. She said. Okay. I was just saying that there are small bottles of wine. That's what she told that. Right. I don't know. I don't know. No, they're not. I know you're not in the record. They're in there usually so well. Yeah. They're not in the force. I think they are. They do have smaller bottles. Thank you, right. They're like, right. Eight, nine, nine. Well, just say no single serving bottles of beer. I believe they. Okay, let's say number 14 is amended to be no. Single serving sales of beer or wine. Well, no, but wine, not bad, but wine. Well, um, there is only one serving. Uh, <laughs> if, I may, if I may, one more time. <laughs> I, 
when, when we had the other condition about the, uh, the sale of rose tubes, air sign, air, airplane sized bottles, we might be able to consider that an airplane, airplane sized bottle. Uh, so I think that would cover that, knowing that, you know, if you're gonna buy a bottle of wine, they're 22, 24 ounce, well, some of them are bigger, kind of, kind of off of my, um, I didn't say that, off the record, sorry. Um, so, but, uh, so that would cover that. So. I think you said no single sales of beer or wine less than 12 ounces. Well, yeah. right. it's less than 12 ounces to cover the Attorney Flores, can you want to chime in? Go ahead. Because uh, legal chimed in on the other end of this, uh, from the CPA, I thought I'd, thought I'd speak up. Uh, it's my opinion, at least, that the, like, the, the four pack of the little bottles you see wouldn't be a single, single sale. It's four units inside of the package, and that would still be a different package. Not, not a single product uh, fit for sale consumption on the bill. Right, exactly. Which I don't think they could be permitted to do anyway. Yeah. So we don't have any for retail sale. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Yes, it's five zero. <laughs>